Wow. You've got to love a good sunrise and rifting. Of course, the question now is where is that standing stone that Kalaya was talking about? Be that thing back there, I think. And obviously, we're not going to get to it with a wall right there, so. New plan. Peaceful morning. We drink to our youth, to the days come and gone. For the age of a person oh, God. is now nearly done. Oh, that's fine. Aha! The sneaky back way, perfect for a thief. Assuming I can get an actual handhold on the rocks. Oh. You should have warned me about the secret entrance. I might have just given away the location. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. You know what? Me too. <laughs> So, what's the significance of this big thing? This is the headquarters of the Nightingales, cut into the mountainside by the first of our kind. We've come to seek the edge we need to defeat Mercer Frey. What kind of an edge? I'm more of a... a blunt weapon myself. If you'll follow me, I'll try to explain on the way. Oh, gods. Right, so, uh, tell me about the Nightingales. They were miners, I see. Don't, don't look at me like that, that was a joke. Gallus, Mercer Frey and I were once members of what's known as the Nightingale Trinity. The Trinity disbanded 25 years ago when Mercer Frey betrayed us by slaying Gallus and dumping his body in the ruins of Snowvale Sanctum. Oh. You know, he looks pretty young for someone who was doing that at the age of... ...whatever he was 25 years ago? Were they part of the Thieves' Guild? Indirectly. The Trinity is usually selected from the ranks of the Guild, although its existence is a closely guarded secret. And what's their purpose? The Nightingales protect the Temple of Nocturnal, a place known as the Twilight Sepulchre. Uh, right. Right, um... And who's Nocturnal? She's the mistress of night and darkness, and the patron of every thief in Tamriel. Ah. Now... I'm not the best person to ask... Er, to think about this because I'm mostly a pirate but I don't think I've ever met a pirate or a th that's not true about pirates but I've never met a thief that worshipped anything but money Nocturnal isn't one for worship and reverence there are no priests and no sermons no services and no arms she influences our luck and in return demands payment oh now that I can get behind that just sounds like a guild contract with extra steps you're closer to understanding than you realise. The only difference is she doesn't demand payment in the traditional sense, and sometimes the cost can be quite high. Whether you know it or not, Nocturnal dictates how well we perform as rogues. Uh... Eh, you know, I'm not that superstitious. I prefer to believe in my skill, not in some sort of... I'm not- I don't have any special powers in magic or anything, I'm just big, tough, and have a good hammer. Again, you have to think differently. Haven't you ever noticed how our luck behaves? Like a novice picking an impossible lock, or a blind man suddenly turning to face you as you reach for his pocket? It's through these subtle means that Nocturnal influences us. That just sounds like she wants us to suffer, frankly, the way you described it. Nocturnal's whim is the greatest mystery to everyone, 
There have been volumes written on the subject. Does she exact payment when we die? When we suffer, does she revel in our misery? No one knows. The return certainly seems worth the risk, though. Right, so, uh... I'll take it capturing Mercer alive is not really on the table anymore? From the moment you were struck with my poisoned arrow at Snowvale Sanctum, my path changed its course. Perhaps I couldn't bring Mercer back alive, but together we were able to clear my name and to put Gallus's memory to rest. I'd always intended Mercer's fate to ultimately be decided by the Guild, and it seems they've spoken. Right. Bryn? This way, please. Uh, you be quiet. I think we can trust Carlia. Let's see what she's on about. Right, I'll trust you. Let's go. I mean, I'll trust Carlia too, but... Alright, where are we going? What the crap was that? Huh? So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingales were just a myth was seeded within the guild on purpose. It helped avert attention from our true nature. What's wrong, Brynjolf? I can almost hear your brow furrowing. I'm trying to understand why I'm here, lass. I'm no priest, and I'm certainly not religious. Why pick me? This isn't about religion, Brynjolf. It's business. I oh, and exploded torches, apparently. This is Nightingale Hall. You're the first of the uninitiated to set foot inside in over a century. Now, if you'll both proceed to the armory to don your Nightingale armor, we can begin the oath. Uh, wait, what? You appear hesitant to don your Nightingale armor. What's troubling you? You want me to become a Nightingale? It's my hope that you will, yes. You know, I've known pirates, I right, to be, you know, reverent of the sea and, uh, you know, certain more tentacle-infested Daedric princes. Religion and thieves seem to make odd bedfellows, if you ask me. This isn't about religion or destiny. This is nothing more than a business transaction between yourself and Nocturnal. Consider this an extremely risky job, but with a massive potential for profit, and you'll do fine. All right. Sure. I can do that. Proceed down the hall to the gate when you're ready. Ah, oh, fake. Uh, where's the... Armoury? You appear hesitant to don your nightingale armor. Oh, yeah. What's troubling you? I can't figure out where it is. I might... Oh, I'm just a... Well, oh, this should be fun. Brin? Don't look. Well, this is not my usual kit. And I'm keeping the pauldron, I don't care. <laughs> Alright. Now where... Where have they gone? Over here. Right. Sorry about that. This is not good. Does this make me look taller? I think it might. Alright, let's do this. I call upon you, Lady Nocturnal, Queen of Merc, and Empress of Shadow. Hear my voice. 
Ah, Carlia. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine, Carlia. Your terms were struck long ago. What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath. To serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. My appetite for Mercer's demise exceeds my craving for wealth, Your Grace. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturnal, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your Avengers and your Sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this life and the next until your conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale, and I restore your status to the same, Carlisle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. I'm sorry. You you didn't you didn't mention anything about selling my soul to the Now that you've transacted the oath, it's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. He's done more. You know, somehow that doesn't surprise me. What's he done? Mercer was able to unlock the guild's vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre. The Skeleton Key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal and, in essence, caused our luck to run dry. I... I, I don't know, mate. I... So the key unlocks any door, including Nordic puzzle doors. That would explain that. Well, yes. But the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. All of us possess untapped abilities. The potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, the potential becomes limitless. The three of us could keep it, is what you're saying? I'm afraid that's impossible. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence, and whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Well, this is the first time I've ever set out to return something. All right. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. You know, I kind of like it. Like redistributing... Uh, it'll be gotten... No, that's not the right word. Anyway, let's go. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. I uh, see so you two are talking... Listen, lass. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Oh, God, why are you telling this to me? Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. Uh, me? Oh, I don't know about that one, mate. I mean, I could captain a ship. I don't know about leaving a, leading a whole Thieves' Guild. Now you, on the other hand, you could do it. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. 
I've never been one to lead. Never desired it, never cared for it. Don't want it. Eh. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know what to say, because I'm new to this whole thing. I know I can lead. I think I can lead. But I've got a ship to maintain. I don't know. Well, we have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation, so don't get sentimental on me now. Uh, tentatively, and after much discussion with my crew, which I will do first, tentatively I accept. Subject to change should change come a cut. Huh. See, this is why I shouldn't leave. I'm not good with words. Right, I'll think about it. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, we'll handle the details. Until then, we have quite the task ahead. Right, then we might as well get to it, eh? I've been poring over the plans you brought us. And I'm convinced the eyes of the Falmer are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthand. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lass. This will be a fight to remember. Right. So, I guess we're not in Gales now. Aye. And some of what Carlia said is starting to make sense. Mercer may have damaged our reputation and raided our coffers, but this goes well beyond even his twisted form of larceny. Old Delvin kept calling it a curse, and we all laughed at him. Looks like the joke's on us. <laughs> Aye. Delvin seems to be right about most things, except Vex. You think we stand a chance against Mercer? If you would have asked me that yesterday, I'd have said no. But now I think our chances have improved. Look, call me crazy if you like. But I trust Kalaya. I don't think she'd lead us down a suicidal path. Besides, I'd rather die with some of Mercer's blood on my blade than spend the rest of my life regretting that I'd run the other way. You know, I like that attitude. And I owe him some serious payback. So, be off then, shall we? Perkid then. Right. Wait, well we've still got light in here. Where the heck is Ergen then? Oh. Oh great. <laughs> eh, well. That's fine. Now the question becomes, do I want to keep this armor on? Or do I want to change back into my usual gear? Because I mean, this fits nice. kind of like it. That's not bad. Kind of intimidating. Yeah, maybe I'll keep it for a while. It's not exactly the stealthiest thing ever, though. I'll let you two catch up. Uh, that way. This whole place is a mess. Speaking of unlucky. Yeah, the thing that this armor does is actually cover up the gigantic gash in my chest. I do kind of like that. Uh. Hey, 
and there we go. Back to normal. I do kind of like the Nightingale gear, but... I have a look to maintain. Hi. Should be a nice day for travelling. Where does this go? Well, that's nice. A little too wide uh, to get through here. There we are. Boo. We're just gonna go. Well, I. And just like that, the fog rolls in. Hello, Foxy. Don't go eat people's chickens now, I. Wait, I know you. No, you don't. I mean, maybe he does, but it's probably by reputation. Oh, good, they're not following me. Yikes. That's two close encounters with guards today that I don't really appreciate. Something else just occurred to me with the Nightingale armor. We're in that. In summer. Might be a little bit interesting. A bit too warm. Right, so it looks like the quickest way to get to Ergin then would be to stick to this side of the river. Oh jeez. Well the wolves are having a grand old time aren't they? I'm gonna just leave them to their whatever that was. Goats are all over the place aren't they? Hello, goat. I'm not meant for running in this kind of cold. But right, we stick to this side of the river. And... Just sort of look out for a... A thing. With a name like Erkin then, I'm going to assume it's... A Dwemer ruin. Who's the? Who knows? Hopefully they're not after me. That's all I can say. Not because I don't think I could take them, but because I don't want to have to whip out my hammer quite yet today. I need 
some landmarks. Sort of the tippy point of the lake goes south. Got it. I can do that. Jeez. Look at these. These birds are as tall as I am. I guess spring in Skyrim, eh? Such as it is. Spring-ish? There's something up there. This looks like it might be a hot spring. Frozen over hot spring. That is a lift. I'm pretty sure. Right, we're gonna stick with the the known way to get there. Which is find the point of this little pond here. Oh, that's interesting. Bunch of Dwemer pops over there. Not if that goes anywhere. I'd figure it out, but I've got to focus. Jeez. So this is probably... Hello. Would you stop? This is probably where we're going. I don't like this. Okay. Get out of the spiky bushes. And run into a spiky pine tree instead. Aye. Alright. So we start out with company. I'm fine with it. Let's go. You picked a bad time. You Damn you! Be careful. You know, it's a little grizzly. Excellent story. Right, a little grizzly, but I do. It's real satisfying to hear that big thwack. Assuming I can actually land it. You won't get the better. You won't live to see tomorrow. I'll show you. I'll kill you if I have to. Oh jeez. Oh. I don't plan no on being killed by the orc. likes of you. Shit. <laughs> nice no. up there. Damn it. Mm, yes. Not a chance. Die, orc. Come on. Take a swing, Head I dare you. Count out your coin. Oh, I'm stuck. No, I don't think I will. Where's your archer friend? Way over there. Somewhere. Whew. Oh. Jeez. You won't leave here alive. And neither will you. Come on. Go to your feet. Fool, I'll have your blood. <laughs> you know, I respect that. Mocking me right up to the point of his death. Respect, sir. Respect. Give up while you still can. <laughs> Satisfied thwack. 
no gold. All right. Nocturnal, if you really are Lady Luck, I'd appreciate a little bit of it. All right, fine. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. I'm <laughs> being mocked by a Daedric Prince. What is this foolishness? There we are. <laughs> Thanks, Nocturnal. I appreciate it. Alright. If this ain't the most precarious contraption I've ever seen. I think that's the best way to describe this bandit camp in particular. A contraption. Hello. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, maybe there is something to this, uh, This luck thing. That's not bad. You know, I'm sure if I could figure out how to use these, that would come in real handy. However, actually, you know what? I can't sell it. Oh wait, high value. As they say. <sighs> right. Must have better be in here. I've got a sob for him. <laughs> 